Hunter Biden's tax problems, business dealings, and well-known drug and alcohol addiction have created a political headache for his father, President Joe Biden. Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden. Hunter Biden. Now the president's son has pleaded not guilty to felony firearms charges, an unexpected twist after a previous deal he had reached to avoid those charges suddenly collapsed. He clearly thought he was going to put this behind him and it wouldn't really be an issue during his father's re-election campaign, but that went up in smoke. Here's what you need to know about Hunter Biden's legal troubles that could potentially set the stage for another high-profile criminal trial during the 2024 election season. A Yale and Georgetown educated lawyer, Hunter Biden is the second son of President Biden. He never worked in government, but he was a lawyer in the Washington sense where he was partly lobbying, uh, partly advising clients, and making a lot more money than either his father or his brother at the time. In 2014, Hunter Biden was paid $50,000 per month to sit on the board of Burisma, a Ukrainian energy company run by an oligarch seeking closer ties to Washington. At the time, his father is vice president. He also has Ukraine as a part of his portfolio. He's working on this campaign to sort of help Ukraine root out corruption. So that ends up presenting some qualms for people in the administration and then ends up presenting a lot more problems for Hunter Biden down the line. Did you and your father ever discuss Ukraine? No. As I said, the only time was after a news account. It wasn't a discussion in any way. There's no but to this, no. Both Joe and Hunter Biden have denied any wrongdoing related to Burisma. Hunter Biden said he displayed poor judgment in accepting the board seat. The younger Biden continued to pursue his foreign business ties once his father exited the vice presidency. A spokesman for his legal team has said, Hunter Biden was a private citizen with every right to pursue his own business endeavors. Those dealings coincided with challenges in Hunter Biden's personal life, including the death of his older brother, Beau Biden, in 2015. So Hunter's life takes a, a quite a dramatic turn. He uh, very openly talks about how he sort of descended into alcohol and drug addiction. He was addicted to crack cocaine. His, his marriage splits up. So his life is, is really rapidly deteriorating. I, Joseph Robinette Biden Jr., do solemnly swear. Just before Joe Biden was set to assume the presidency in 2021, Hunter Biden revealed he was under criminal investigation, a probe that began in 2018 and was being led by Trump-appointed U.S. Attorney David Weiss. According to court documents filed in June, federal prosecutors in Delaware say Hunter Biden received more than $1.5 million in annual income in both 2017 and 2018, and failed to pay taxes on it despite owing more than $100,000 each year. During the investigation, an associate of Hunter Biden covered the $1.9 million that he owed in back taxes for those years, including interest and penalties. The charges extended beyond his finances. In a separate filing, prosecutors say Hunter Biden knowingly possessed a firearm in October 2018, despite being addicted to drugs and barred from owning a gun. From our reporting, we do know that in 2022, they did start having a lot of witnesses come before the grand jury. And at that point, it seemed like they were you know, moving towards a potential case. Ultimately, you know, earlier this year, they tried to reach a deal. Hunter Biden agreed to plead guilty to two misdemeanor tax charges. Under the deal, the younger Biden would also have to undergo a pretrial diversion program that would allow him to avoid gun charges in exchange for staying sober and not getting another gun. Usually you think, like, they would both understand what they've agreed to and the judge is going to sign off on it and everyone's going to, you know, move on. That's not what happened in July. In a stunning turnaround, the plea deal imploded after a U.S. district judge said she needed more information before signing off. Both sides weren't on the same page about what exactly was covered by this deal. Hunter thought, you know, this essentially ended the investigation and the government was saying, like, no, we are going to continue our investigation and we can't promise that there's no other charges. I'm here today to announce the appointment of David Weiss as a special counsel consistent with the Department of Justice regulations governing such matters. With the plea deal in shambles, federal prosecutors indicted Hunter Biden on September 14th on three gun crimes, claiming he knowingly lied on a disclosure form when he bought and possessed a gun while addicted to drugs. On October 3rd, Hunter Biden pleaded not guilty to the gun charges. 
prosecutors did not bring tax charges against him, although they could still do so. A potential trial of Hunter Biden could deepen his legal problems as Republicans push to implicate the president in his son's business activities. Welcome back, everyone. I am directing our House committee to open a formal impeachment inquiry into President Joe Biden. This logical next step will give our committees the full power to gather all the facts and answers for the American public. The White House said the president wasn't a party to his son's business affairs and has done nothing wrong. In a statement, Hunter Biden's legal team said, Republicans have been chasing and failing to prove their own conspiracies about Hunter Biden and his legitimate business activities. It does set up the potential for, you know, a trial on his sort of messy personal life and business life, almost at the same time that, you know, his father is running for re-election and his father's rival for the presidency, potentially former President Trump, is also facing his own trials on criminal charges. Uh, and so that is a very real potential, and that's pretty unprecedented in, uh, you know, American history.